What was the most painful thing about the pregnancy and my reaction to it? This video is sponsored by Squarespace. With Squarespace, you get to control and customize your content to fit your brand this 2020. From websites to online stores, Squarespace provides easy to use templates to build your presence online today. Squarespace is what we use for Shan's personal site and the game of desire. Go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to start playing around for free and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. First and foremost, can we introduce the newest, latest, greatest member of Shared Entertainment? Ryu Shia Brady. Hey, give her a round of applause. We got a baby out. This is going to be the first video that we put out as parents. Yeah, I know. So shout out to you for being on this journey with us. It ended up beautifully. She's awesome. Uh, I'm really enjoying my time as a mom. I yeah. feel like you're swimming. Yeah, swimming. Swimming in it. Oh, swimming. I'm basking. In basking. Yeah, I'm you basking, are basking in the fatherhood. Um, it's actually it's been crazy. Do you think this is this has changed our relationship? I don't think that. I mean, we've had a baby for two weeks, so I mean, everything changes everything. Yeah. But the reason why I wanted to do this particular video which is just like a reconnection video yeah is because i feel like pregnancy yeah was really hard in our relationship yeah i, I wouldn't yeah. say that it's just i wouldn't say hard but yeah i mean 2020 last, how about 2020 the last video they would argue that i was an asshole and then you told me that you like masturbate by yourself i could tell you were hurt you could see it in my eyes yes i could tell did you get hurt that i was hurt no 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 some could argue that. <laughs> Do you feel like I, was <laughs> I would asshole? not? No, I would not say that. What was the most painful thing about the pregnancy and my reaction to it? That's a really great question because we went on that walk maybe yeah. like a week before I gave birth. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The There's night shit walk. Shit on Jared. <laughs> <laughs> shit on Jared walk. That's what that was. And I said to you, I'm not gonna look back at this time and say you killed it. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of shit is that? But I don't know if that's true. Yeah. You did an incredible job. Yeah. And, but I'm not going to look back on that time and say that I killed it. Why not? You, here's the thing. Ryu is healthy, beautiful, and alive and vibrant because you killed it. Thank you, baby. Yeah. I think, yeah, and that's the thing is like, I take comfort in knowing all the sacrifices were for the life of our child. And so I'm really proud of how I did pregnancy as a pregnant woman, but as Shan Boudram, Shan Brady, yeah. I don't know if I'm necessarily that proud of the way that I like cope with the pregnancy, hmm. but like in, in bits and spurts. I mean, it's my first time doing something. Yeah. I think maybe mostly in terms of our relationship, but it's my relationships in general. Here's the thing. <laughs> I had a few talk um, with other husbands and other fathers, and they were like, yo, the last few weeks, she gonna be at your throat. <laughs> so when you popped up and took me on that walk and, and you know, just listed off, you ain't shit, Jared. <laughs> um, I actually was like, I think I even said in the in the conversation, like, I'm not gonna take this personal. Yeah. Because I know there's a whole slew of other things that are going on, not even privy to me. Yeah. I'm just the closest person to you. So I just had to take that cannon hit, mm -hmm. you know? you've just gone through so many months of not feeling like yourself and then towards the end now you have the anxiety of labor that's yeah. kind of a thing too it's like <clears throat> knowing i explained this to los actually los was like are you excited for labor i'm like imagine knowing that you're gonna break your leg next week yeah. you don't know when you don't know how but you're gonna break your leg like the pain i'm gonna experience yeah. is going to be tremendous and it was yeah um I don't know if it's break your leg back and I never broke, broke a leg before, but <laughs> there's an anxiety that starts to build up because all your life you've been told this is the most painful thing you're going to go through. So I think that there was like a lot of just mounting things that were happening at that time. And um, so, yeah, I think it was a strain on our relationship, which interestingly, I was listening to this uh, talk this morning by my favorite Esther Perel. And she said that a lot of people strive for a happy relationship. A lot of people strive for a peaceful relationship. She's like, I think the shout true benchmark is who? I said shout out to Atheon. Oh, Atheon. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I think the true benchmark is a creative relationship. Mm. And that was like a 
massive weight off of me. Yeah. Because I feel like with you, based on what I do for a living and just based on how amazing our relationship has been this whole time, if we're not like killing it, you know, like peaceful and happy, I start to feel really defeated. Mm. And that's because my goal is to have like the best relationship. Yeah. No drama, no problems, great sex, great connection, great communication all yeah. the time. He yeah. knows my needs. I know his needs. We're mutual. We're emotionally regulating ourselves. We have sure. self insight. But the truth is the real goal is creativity where we flow with the times. And creativity is not linear, it's not predictable, it's not formulaic. Hmm. So when you say, cre when she says creativity, does that mean like creating a happy atmosphere? Or is that something that's like... Let me ask you, what does that mean to you when you hear... When I, when I hear it, I think of creating a happy atmosphere, like creating the vibe or the, the, the situation that you want together. I think of creativity like rising to the occasion based on the circumstances, not based on what you've done or what you've known before. You're not always trying to duplicate what's worked in the past. Yeah. Um, and so creativity for me means acknowledging that even if we did have a period of time where everything was perfect and cohesive and happy, there could be a shift in circumstances now that we have to be creative mm. and making something new yeah. rather than trying to like force the old formula down each other's throat. Yeah. So I think creativity and, you know, we describe our relationship as like a free relationship yeah. because we don't use the term open because no one has engaged in that way. But a free relationship to me means like, hey, it's always up for negotiation for conversation. There is no hard set in stone rules. I'm always um, interested in what your truth is and what your best case scenario is mm -hmm. and vice versa, I hope for me. But creative, I think, is even cooler than free. And I often say this whenever we do have arguments it's like i'm the one that's always having to change <laughs> why don't you ever have to change and i feel like i'm always adapting you know to our relationship so i i connect with that creative relationship heavy because i feel like that is what makes me an ideal lover yeah that is what makes me um uh be able to you know no offense but work with anybody that i want to because i will be able to why would I take offense to that? I don't know. You know what I'm <laughs> saying. But, you know, okay. like, because we're not special oh, or, okay. or, you know what I mean? Okay, so I thought you were saying it like work with anybody, like I'm a special case problem. No. What you meant is if you're not with me, you'd be successful with someone else. Yeah, because yeah. I will be able to adapt to whatever their needs if I want to. Yeah. If I feel like they're worth it or they feel like they they have something to um, uh, that I want or that I, I feel like we can have a great relationship, I'm going to figure out what is bothering you or what is our downfall in this relationship and i'm going to adapt to what you need and yeah. with with ryu coming into play i feel like we've gotten into a few little tiffs about ryu already there was a night where uh we weren't getting along ryu was waking up every couple hours um so we were all sleep deprived and you said to me you're not making any space. You want to do this parenting thing how you want to do it. Yeah. And I was so caught off guard because in my mind, the the style of parenting that I always envisioned for us was us to do it together. So the thought of me pushing you out and not giving you room to be involved with Ryu is the same as I am being involved with Ryu um, kind of hurt me. Interestingly enough, the Esther Perel thing I just watched was like, that's exactly what I think I was saying to you, but not knowing how to say. Yeah. And it always goes back to understanding somebody um, outside of like your connection. Yeah. So she was saying, you know, there's like two types of societies. There's independent societies and there's codependent societies or yeah. interdependent. Mm -hmm. So that means that people work together. Mm -hmm. And so interdependence would be um, societies that are more community based. Yeah. But America is a very independent society. Yeah. Like your dreams, your success, your yeah. this. And so some people grew up in families that were interdependent and some people grew up in families that were independent and when i think about you you were by yourself by 18 years old yeah you you're you're not an only child you have other siblings but more or less you've always been like the outside son yeah because both of your parents got remarried and had children with the person they were married to yeah um you've always relied heavily on yourself yeah Jared went through a period of time where you were homeless. Yeah. You went through a period of time where you essentially were estranged from your family for a little bit of time. Yeah. My experience is the total opposite. Yeah. I come from a very 
tight knit family. I come from a family where I always know I can rely on them. Yeah. And if push comes to shove or I'm in financial trouble, like I was asking you that, like when you were homeless, why didn't you go live with this person? Or why didn't you reach with that person? You're like, that wasn't even an option in my mind. Yeah. And so I think sometimes your mindset goes to like, I can do this. I want to do this. I'm doing this by myself. Whereas in for me, I'm like, how do we do this together? Yeah. Um, so I think that in those moments, you know, when, and that was a really telling thing, like, cause I said to you, you're not making space for me. And what I meant by that is my vision of parenting was like, you change a diaper, I'll throw it out. You know, yeah. even in terms of cooking, I'm like, I cook, you clean, you cook, I clean. Like we're doing things together. Mm. In my house growing up, if somebody came home with groceries, you got your ass up. And you put those away. You put it away yeah. because that person did that job. Yeah. So there was always this trade-off thing happening. And so I envisioned the parenting being kind of like that where we were doing it together where I, you said to me, I thought you'd be happy that yeah. I'm doing everything. Yeah. You envisioned me on the phone with my friends, like, girl, like, <laughs> he was up all night. I didn't get out of bed. I didn't do nothing. I wasn't yeah. even, like, I was in sleep land. Like, he's doing everything. Like, that being the story that I would tell. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's funny because I'm in a, a split right now because when I think about our parent, like, our parenting style, I would want it to be the one that you're describing. My nature is you know i went through the labor with you i was there i, I witnessed it you know yeah. so my mind switched from when we get home i don't want her to have to do any of the hard lifting with ryu i want to do that right now and give her a break because she had to carry this baby she had to oh. do all of these things so in my mind i was like if i'm up i'm going to try to take care of everything so that she can relax um and i was kind of hurt to know that my mind or my decision to be helpful was actually hurtful so when you told me my reaction was anger you know i just want to apologize for that for one i don't envision my whole goal is to make this as smooth and as um loving as possible never to be a um hindrance or my actions to be added weight to whatever you're going through um no thank you and yeah. i obviously owe you an apology because the way that i had brought that up but in moments of like stress when i'm feeling hurt my mind goes to like i don't need you and so i think that my um the energy that I give when I'm like coming to you with these problems is that energy. Yeah. It's not an energy of like, hey, I'm hurt or hey, I, I feel left out or hey, like, can we work together? Yeah. My energy is very like, you're fucking up. Yeah. You're about to lose something incredible. Yeah. And I said to you in that argument, I'm like, I'd really make sure you choose the next hand <laughs> of your mouth wisely. <laughs> I hate when you do those threats and <laughs> arguments. It's like... I think I've caused distress by my reaction to criticism. Um, it is defensive. Um, it's argumentative. And it is less to do with validating what you're feeling and more to do with me making sure that you still see good in me. Um, and I think that is probably our biggest issue. I feel like it's hard for you to discern between I'm telling you that you're hurtful right now versus I'm telling you that you're a hurtful person. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I have to work on. Um, it's something that it's on the forefront of my brain and to react slower and to listen to what you're saying more before I am trying to defend myself. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why is it so hard to offer me my love language in times of conflict uh because it's the literal opposite of mine it, it's like trying to back in you know those like parking garage things where they only like let you drive in but if you back out you'll rip up your tires it's like trying to go in through that entrance and so every time that i am i i i, I should give you your love language my i feel like i'm ripping up my tires because my entire instinct is to go forward yeah i feel like 
I've caused you distress okay. in this relationship by not taking my own advice. Mm. But this is a pregnancy thing. So yeah. the advice that I gave in this podcast I did was the secret to a uh, happy, harmonious marriage is using your shut the fuck up filter. Yes. Meaning that not everything that you think do you have to say and complain about. Not every problem do you have to make into a mountain. Yeah. And in every other relationship, we do that. At work, we let people do some crazy things. Then we go home and complain to our partner about it. Yeah. Or if our family members annoy us, we say, okay, mom, I'm just the Amazon person's here. I got to go. Bye. And then we complain about somebody else. We don't make everything they do their business to like fix and work on. Well, now that I'm not pregnant anymore, I mean, that's something that I want to be able to give back to you. Even like being like, oh, maybe his back hurts. I want to do something for him. Yeah. Maybe he's having a hard day. Maybe he's emotionally stressed because something isn't working out the way that he wanted it to. Yeah. I feel like this entire year has been, you know, rightfully so. Yeah. About me, my comfort, my feelings, my yeah. pain, my experiences. Um, and as we transition as a family to a new phase, obviously the, the person who can't speak or do for themselves is most important. Yeah. Because they rely 100% on us. Yeah. But I, I do want to go back to the style that we were in before where it was a lot more equal and a lot more mutual. Yeah. No, and I think it's getting there. I think our, our, our lives are getting normal again. Um, even though that this new edition's only been two weeks, but I do feel like we're we're starting to get the hang of it, and things are going this way. We got a routine, um, and and I'm excited for us to just continue down this path and and to continue to grow and continue to to get better. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited, and I feel more connected to you than ever. Do you really? Yeah. Are you saying that for the video? No. What about you? I feel more connected to you than ever. I feel more in awe of you than ever. I say this all the time with you. Like the greatest thing I think about being with you is I always feel like I'm getting a new boyfriend. Oh my God. Like I always <laughs> feel like new look, yeah. new vibe, new energy, like new yeah. swag. Like yeah. and your dad's swag is so hot. It's oh. so sexy. <laughs> like I was saying to Ryu last night, I was like, how are you going to feel that all your friends are going to be like, yo, your dad's fine. Oh my God. <laughs> like your dad's so fine. So I'm just so, you know, I'm, I'm so in awe of you, of you. I'm so in love with you. All right, so before we go, I got a question for you. How would you define the term creative relationship? And speaking of creativity, this video is sponsored by Squarespace as per usual. And we're looking for a creative right now to join our team. We're looking hey. for somebody uh, who's gonna be like a social media manager yep. slash video editor and it can be anybody working from abroad. It's a paid job. So you can actually go to our Squarespace website to learn more about that. Uh, if you have watched the channel at all, I guarantee you, you have heard us talk about Squarespace. So without further ado, check this out. Look, I know building a website can be daunting, but Squarespace makes it so easy. Even for me, who doesn't know how to code, I find Squarespace very user-friendly. I mean, if you're a fan of this channel, you probably heard us brag about Squarespace because we literally use that for every website we build. But let me tell you some things that you may not know about. Blogging tools. Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to help tell your story. I mean, look, look, you can schedule your post and have your content work for you, not the other way around. Social media integrations. So anything that you post on your Twitter, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, whatever you use, can be posted onto your website. And you can make social links so that they can go from your website straight to go and follow you. Subscriptions. Easily sell subscriptions to products or services on a weekly or monthly basis to generate reoccurring revenue and build customer loyalty. Look, if you're still listening to this voice, all I'm saying in short is go check it out, build a website for free, have fun, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I take off. If you let me hit it, I'ma knock your lace off. I just groove around.